Um, so yes, please tag people in this. Um, please participate in the convo. Um, we would actually just love to have a conversation. Um, we call these nights um, Coffee with Jesus. And um, the aim is for us to become more personal with Jesus. It is to actually sit in your house and make for a coffee for you and a coffee for Jesus. Um, to make our relationship with him physical. Mm -hmm. And um, especially in this time, I feel like it's so needed that when we can't see um, our way forward, it's it's needed to see something physical. Um, even if it's just us making a manifestation um, and inviting him onto a table and say, you know what, Jesus, I have no clue how I'm going to get through this, but I trust that you do. So, um, yay, the sound is gone. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Adrian, it's so nice having you guys here. So um, if you've got any questions, if you've got anything to say, please type that in the comments below. And um, so Lee Jones says, please pray for my mom's friend. Um, that is will will be done now. She was moved from the cancer to death ward where she needs to pass on now. Um, the cancer is eating her body up from inside. Hmm. Um, they can do nothing. Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> ah. okay. Sorry, this is such a beautiful subject. Um, oh, well, you know, I'm crying again. <laughs> um, can I tell you that I feel the heart of Jesus right now so immensely? Um, and he's got such a heart for people. Um, right now, we want to come and speak the impossible. Um, we are not accepting um, anything outside of God's will. And, um, oh, Jesus. Hmm. Ooh, I just feel the presence of God so immensely. And Lord, we just come and we just want to thank you, Jesus, that you are beautiful. We want to thank you, Jesus, that you are beautiful, even though we can't see it. And God, we thank you that your will is perfect and that your healing is perfect perfect yes. Jesus God and we want to ask that you will come Jesus and that your will will be done right now yes. Lord you say in your word that of faith hope and love love is the strongest Lord and this that we're feeling right now God we want to release it unto them right now we want to release it unto them right now God and we want to thank you God that this is going to glorify you in whatever way possible Jesus we thank you that this will glorify you yes. Lord whatever you decide we just want to say Jesus that you are holy and you are worthy Jesus and that we love you Lord we come and we just ask that you will come and have your way Lord we believe that you can do anything if you could part the the waters God if you could if you could do miracles God you can do it again Lord and we just thank you for this God and we just thank you that that you alone hold the power and so we want to come and speak to that body right now we want to come and speak to that body wherever you are Every single cell aligned with the word of God. Yes, yes. And we thank you, Jesus, that whatever you decide, Lord, is manifesting right now. We, th we thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh. Oh, yes, absolutely. Sinai so says, um, it is so important to declare victory. You are right. We need to live in a place of victory. Um, you're right, Debbie. And... Um, you know what, like in this season, um, it is actually so important to know the truth because your truth is not necessarily the truth. My truth and my situation is not the truth. And I truly feel that, um, that we sometimes mistake our truth for the truth of the word of God and there's one thing that throughout the ages has been steadfast and that's the word of God and even though we might not see it even though we might not feel it um, the word of God doesn't change mm -hmm. he doesn't change he's still a loving papa with his arms wide open and ooh, ooh. I actually oh. um I love Psalm 23 and how God is our good shepherd and 
I was listening to a sermon the other day where they were speaking about how the sheep often wander off. And so, like, where it says that God leads us beside peaceful rivers, the reasoning behind that is, like, a sheep, a sheep's nose and mouth are so close to, together, like, more, more so than normal. And so that's why if a shepherd were to lead a sheep beside rough waters, it would actually, like, uh, sniff in that water while it's trying to drink and it would, it would drown almost. And that's why he leads us beside peaceful rivers because you, a sheep needs actually very peaceful and calm rivers to drink from so that the water doesn't go in through the nose. And the other thing is um, when it says he makes us lie in green pastures, it's actually because sheep would go wandering off in the heat of the day if the shepherd didn't force it to lie down. So he would bind the legs together so the sheep is made to lie down. And that's why he makes us lie in green pastures. And I feel like in this season, God is making us lie in green pastures. So even though it's uncomfortable, I mean, you can imagine having everything tied together and you can't move, but it's actually for your own good. And God's making us lie in these green pastures. There's so much peace with that. So, and it's actually for our own good so that we don't wander off and burn ourselves in the scorching heat of the day. Because life is like the scorching heat where it's actually... It will burn us and it will keep us so busy that if God doesn't sometimes forcefully bring a stop to things and just get us back to that place of simplicity again and mm. of quiet and of being still, we'll burn ourselves out because we just want to run ahead with everything. And it's so beautiful how he, like the comparison of the good shepherd and how he just he knows exactly what our needs are even before we know our own needs. Yeah. And it makes me think of like, um, we sometimes see Jesus with a sheep around his neck. But um, the picture that we don't know is that sometimes the shepherd has to break the sheep's legs. Mm -hmm. Because if the sheep runs away, the shepherd goes and he gets the, sh the, the one sheep and he will leave the 99 for the one. But what he would do is he would actually break the legs and put put the sheep around his neck and he would carry that sheep so that the sheep could bond with him until the season where healing has taken place. And um, I truly feel that this is a season where God has allowed us to be broken. I'm not saying that he's causing the things, but I'm saying that he is allowing the brokenness to happen because without brokenness, we will have no value of healing. We will have no value of what it feels like to be close to the Father. And his word in Psalm says, for God is close to the brokenhearted. And it also says that he, um, it's beautiful. And, and David says, like, especially in the, the Passion Translation, it says that he, he reads our prayers in our liquid tears. Mm. And that's so beautiful. Like, I, I feel that there's such a beautiful place to be broken before God and um, the world wants to tell us that we have to have everything together we need to be perfect when we come to him but he doesn't say that he says I don't need you to be fixed to come to me I need you to come to me so that I can do the fixing mm -hmm. and right now I believe that there are so many people that um, feel like there is no no place for them and you have no purpose. And um, I feel that in the spirit, there's such a season of, um, of hopelessness for some people that they feel so overwhelmed by, by everything that needs to happen that we would rather do nothing than to do something. Mm -hmm. And um, I've encountered this this whole week. Like we've, we, we deal with a lot of kids and... Um, it's such a blessing working with them and but I've seen so much hopelessness and I've seen so much so, um, so much doubt and I truly believe that in this season it is it is needed for us to get back to the main thing and this is a season of purpose and I want to come and speak that over you wherever you are and um, I think like Let's greet some people and let's actually get to the basics of what purpose is. And um, and then please ask us some questions. And um, or if you need just need prayer, please pop in. Um, or if you just want to just be, just be. It's also okay. And it's beautiful. Um, 
I want to say hi. <laughs> Adrian says hi, Pumi. <laughs> um, Shamima. Hey, Shamima. And then Anna. Hey, Anna. How are you doing? <laughs> um, it's awesome having you guys on the stream. Please share with your people. Um, if you don't, it's also okay. Um, yeah, so right now, um, I think just before we start, um, we can see my pray again. Do we want to pray again? Yeah, we can. Yeah, okay. Lord, I just thank you, Jesus, that <laughs> you are taking over right now. You're taking our words, God, and you're turning it into whatever you want it to be. And um, I just thank you that you are releasing purpose inside of every single one of us, God. And um, Lord, I want to pray. And your word says that the angels are the ministering spirits to those who are the ears of salvation. And I want to thank you, God, that you are that you are sending out the angels with word, words of knowledge, peace, love, and purpose. And I want to call on those angels that are writing down the purposes of people right now. And I want to thank you, God, that they're writing down your word as you speak them right now and that they glorify you and only you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, so throughout this season, um, I've been asking myself, what is purpose and um, what, what does it really mean to be purposed? Like... Because it's a beautiful word, but if it's not practical for me, it means nothing. Um, so do you want to talk about what you feel? Hmm. I think it's also something I've asked myself a lot because, um, sure, actually for probably for a few years, but especially over the last few months, I, it's something I've been asking, like, where am I going? Why am I here? And um, I love, like, I love that we have children and get to to bring them up because that is obviously one of the most amazing purposes we can live out on earth because we never know who we are raising and to actually like we often say to each other you learn so much from a child like you think you're there to teach them and to guide them and we are but they also teach us so much valuable lessons about the kingdom of God and so I've been back and forth in my mind and just asking God and sometimes it's a wrestle sometimes I wrestle things out with God especially because I realize I don't always have answers for things and that's actually okay not to have answers for everything but it's just a day-by-day -day process and also yes we need to have long-term visions but you never want to live in those long-term visions only that you actually miss out on the present day and something God keeps saying to me with purpose is am I loving well like I can't expect to live out this this huge magnificent purpose if I can't even love the security guard at the boom or sure. share a meal with someone if you're not faithful with the small and so we've just been discussing like what are the practical practical things of how purpose actually looks and um, how it ties in and so something that I was saying to him is that when you find what you're passionate about um, when you find the things that you love you find what you're passionate about and then if you find what the world needs and what people need, you find your mission. And that place where passion and mission meet is where your purpose is established. And that can look look different in so many ways. And it's so vast, actually. It just, yeah. it just is based on our willingness to surrender. And how much are we prepared to lay down? Because we all want the huge purpose. We all want the huge calling. But we don't always know the cost that it's come at. And like how much it actually costs you in the process. And the cost is also based around how much we are willing to surrender. Yeah. Wow, yes. <laughs> I think um, for me that's also very true that like um, if you look at the word calling and purpose, the two, the two words, um, the difference is that purpose means to, um, to take something and put it forth. To aim something somewhere and um, I was thinking about the meaning of the word calling and I was thinking that maybe we've got it also wrong to think that um, calling is all about us because mm. um, I think that like it's so easy and especially like only like this last couple of months have I realized that I've also been sitting the plot miss like I've missed it 
and it was actually it's such a beautiful place to know that um that it it doesn't revolve around us um because it revolves if it revolves around us we kind of have to sustain it um but then i've had this revelation where god was just telling me what happens if a dad calls his little one he expects the little one to come to him and so much of like so much of a conversation with us and God is all about Lord this, Lord this, Lord this, Lord this. And this is the season where God is calling us. And a calling means that he has placed a calling to his feet, to his presence, to his heart. And so much of the things that he's actually sharing with us is not to speak to others. Yep. But it's actually because he wants a conversation with you. As a parent, like sometimes you just want to sit with your kids and you just want to have a chat. You don't just want to send them off and say, um, so I need you to quickly do this and this and this and this and this and this. And that's also fine here and there. But most of the time you just actually just want to spend time with your kids. And so a calling is when God calls us to his feet. It's when he calls us into the intimacy. It's when he calls us into that role place where we say, OK, Jesus, I have no idea where I am or who I am, but I trust that you do know. And just sitting at his feet and being totally vulnerable and totally honest, that is that is where he's calling us in this season. And then from there on, in the total surrenderedness, he can send us and he can purpose us. I don't believe we just get one purpose, but I do believe that he purposes your life, which means that he can send you anytime. But he can only send us if we are willing to give him the glory. If we broke enough, in, enough to actually make it all about him. Because yes. if we are going to get the glory, he can't use us for that. And something um, that we've been chatting about a lot as well as how when God reveals stuff to us or gives us dream or prophetic pictures and like anything along those lines, we are so quick to want to run to people and say, oh, I experienced this or I did this or I said this over this person. And I don't I don't know if that's necessarily what God always wants. Like we always challenge each other to actually pray about it first. And if God permits us to share it, then we do. But it can't just be all about running to people to make ourselves look good and make ourselves look spiritual because then we've kind of lost it. And like I often think back to, like, that's our reward on earth. If we are going to, sure. like, tell people what we're doing the whole time, that's our reward. That's the extent of our reward. And so it's rather just to keep things, like, between us and God and actually grow that relationship with Him. Not not just, like, spew it all over the world because we can. We want to share God's love with people, yes, and who He is and get people saved and, and just establish relationships with God with them. But we don't necessarily want to always just go around and tell people absolutely everything that we're experiencing with God because that's that's like the intimate places in our heart where it's between us and God and our relationship with Him. Yeah. And um, I love one thing that you actually said this week and um, she said that it's like a married couple actually what they do in their bedroom is very private and it's not to share with other people. So sometimes when God shares stuff with us, we just blabber it out. And I was thinking with that saying, like, how can God trust us with his word if he can't trust us with his, with little things? Mm -hmm. How can God trust us with the many if he can't trust us with the little? And um, yeah, but the purpose of this video is also to make it very practical, mm -hmm. to make it very practical because um, I find that Christianese talk is very tedious for me because um, I'm not one that really understands it. Um, if people talk very high and lofty, lofty <laughs> I am very sorry, but I don't understand it. So I've been I've been asking God, like God, break it down for me, like break it down so that I can understand it, because. Um, and it's so beautiful. I watched, we watched a video. Um, I, I watched a video. It's like so used to us watching videos. I watched a video of Heidi Baker 
and where she was actually saying that after all the years of doing her theology and after studying and after doing everything, um, God has reduced her to a simple lady in the dirt. And um, yo, that's so beautiful. Like, I feel like God needs, we need to be at a place where God can reduce us away from our knowledge, away from what we've studied, away from what we want God to be. And um, we, Stephanie Gritzinger, oh, I love her. She, um, she once said that we need to start asking God to enter the room as he wants to, not as we want him to. And that is so true. Like most of the time we, we, we say, okay, Jesus, but you've given me this dream and um, I need you to do it like this, 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 this. And um, could you give me a silver chair and not a pink one? And <laughs> I think it's actually so funny, but um, I want to, I want to tell you guys that I do believe that God gives us dreams that he is he's the he's the provider of dreams within our hearts and within our spirits and um if you feel that there's a dream that is stuck inside of you um do not let go of the dreams it's okay not to see it manifest immediately um there are many dreams that god has been sharing with us but then I truly believe that it's in the surrendering. Like, are you willing to surrender your biggest dream? Your, are you willing to sacrifice that? Because if you're willing to sacrifice that, God can use you in it. And um, I think it's at the end of the day, purpose is all about Jesus. And um, we've made it, actually, we've made it an ugly thing. And um, we've purposed things and we've called it purpose. And um, at the end of the day, it doesn't glorify God at all. Because mm -hmm. the word says that we were made for him, by him. I think, um, and then also, don't compare yourself with people. Because everyone, everyone's got their own. I know we hear this all the time. Like, you've got your own lane to run in. And... Um, yeah, just when we when we take our eyes off of that lane and go into other people's lanes and think, oh, they have it all together or uh, they're far ahead of me. But you don't ever see like what a person actually goes through in the day or how they are at home, how they are behind closed doors, um, what they've been through. Um, so we can't actually compare ourselves with people because that ends up stealing away, firstly, the present moment we're in. It steals away our passion. It steals our focus. It just... It wrecks us. Comparison, like we often say to each other, comparison is one of the biggest thieves ever. Not just the thief of joy. And firstly, it steals your joy because the word says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so if you don't have joy, um, if you lose your joy, you kind of lose your strength. It's, mm -hmm. it's the first thing that goes. And um, then from there on, it steals your peace. And then from there on, it just comes and it takes away bit by bit, and um, yeah, can I just say, um, please comment if you need us yes. to pray for something, if you have any questions, please comment, um, we have, do not have all the answers, and we are proud to say that we do not have all the answers, but we believe that God is all sufficient, and in sending people in the right time, in the right place, and um Yes. So, um, can I just first speak to Tarina? Tarina, and um, if you're still there, could you just um, comment for us? And um, I just want to release a prophetic word, if that's okay with you. Okay. And for the rest of you, um, if you want to, like, just tag somebody, you can... Um, if you want to ask a question, if you just want to have a chat with us, do that, please leave a comment below. Tarina, okay. Um, I feel that in this season, the enemy has tried to overwhelm you with um, the past and telling you that you are not good enough. 
telling you that how can you survive? How can you be alive if um, everybody else achieves and making you feel like it is all your fault? And I want to tell you that the enemy is a liar. He's a thief. He's a liar. And all he can do is speak in his mother tongue, which is lies. And there is so much purpose on your life. And the heart of God goes out towards you because you are an intercessor. And God says, for I have chosen you to be close to my heart. And in this season, the enemy has tried to pull you away with the little things. But God says, everything you do, do unto me. Do it unto me. And right now, I want to come and I want to break every single thing, every lie that is hanging over you in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ. So just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do not need touching, that you do not need distance. Thank you, Jesus. And the rest of you can just pray with us. Thank you, Jesus, that you are touching her right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're coming to show your beautiful child how much you love her. Thank you, Jesus, that you're touching her right now. Yes, from the top of your head down to the soles of your feet, experience and be filled with the glory of God. Yes. I command joy to enter into every single cell. Every lie dissipate right now in Jesus' name. And I hear Jesus say, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing. And Darina, he's doing a new thing. When the Israelites came into the promised land, God stopped giving them food the same way that he did for years because he was doing a new thing. He gave them new ways of provision. And so right now, I want to come and speak that God is providing in new ways. He's providing like you have never seen before. But he's also saying, tame the tongue. Because he wants to share his heart's desires with you. And for too long, you have relied on on other people and on prophetic word and on other people's relationships because the enemy has lied to you because you are worthy enough. You are worthy enough. He has chosen you and you are worthy. We love you and we know that God has got such a great purpose for you and that he's impacting the future just by placing you on this earth. Things will never be the same again. And that's a good space. Thank you. Can I can I quickly share mm. a word um for if Pumi, are you still there? Pumi, you can just comment if you're still there. I think you can give her the word. Um. Anyway, so I actually have had you on my heart quite a bit the last few days, and um, I just when we're sitting now, I just felt like you've got this beautiful story inside of you, but you see yourself without a story, and you you see yourself with like nothing to share with people and you think you yeah just like that you don't have the worth that other people do and and i feel like god's just you're really emphasizing that you have got one of the greatest stories to share with people like you are one of his greatest stories and he doesn't see like the the um your your past and all of that he only just sees the blueprint of what he's put inside of you yes. and you are like a see as in esther and just that you've got so much royalty to you, but you see yourself in rags, but you're actually not in rags. You're in his 
I just see you in like this beautiful purple and gold robe at the feet of Jesus. It's like, it's so beautiful. And just that he's like, he's saying to you, he's infatuated with you and with spending time with you. And you've got so much to give to people. And there's so much that lies before you and you just need to step into that and just grab a hold of it because the joy, like every single tear that you've cried is going to just be completely, um, like you're going to have an abundance of joy for the tears that you've cried in time to come. And I like also just see you at the feet of Jesus washing his feet with your tears. But it's such a, it's such a beautiful and vulnerable place. And I feel like God is, God is busy giving you a broken and contrite spirit, which is beautiful in the eyes of Jesus. Um, so even though it feels like a tough time now, that that is something that people cannot take away from you. Mm. And I can promise you, you're gonna you're gonna get out on the other side of this and just be like, wow, your relationship with God is gonna be so deep and so steady that nothing, almost nothing, is gonna shake you from that because once God cements a work, it it's done. And so I just wanted to encourage you that you are beautiful as you are and you've got so much to give people and you're such a blessing to be around. And don't let the enemy like make you turn and like look back over your shoulder on what has been, but look forward on what God is doing. And even if you can't see that, that's also okay because God knows exactly where he's taking you. So just wanted to say that for you. And then we want to say hi, hi to Pinky. Hello, and um, yeah, so also one thing that I want to share is um, there's this, um, I read this blog um, from Mark Manson, and it was actually so profound. He's not even a Christian. I don't think he is because he was kind of blatant on there being no God, but, um, but he had uh, something with vision and purpose, and it was so profound that God spoke through him on his blog. Um, and I actually want to read it to you guys, and it says, When people feel like they have no sense of direction, no purpose in their life, it is because they do not know what is important to them. They don't know what their values are. And when you do not know what your values are, then you are essentially taking on other people's values and you are living other people's priorities instead of your own. This is a one-way ticket to unhealthy relationships and eventual misery. Discovering one's purpose in life essentially boils down to finding those one or two things that are bigger than yourself and bigger than those people around you. It is not about some great achievement or merely finding a way to spend, but it's merely finding a way to spend your limited amount of time on earth very well. And now you must get off the couch and act. And take the time and think beyond yourself. Think greater than yourself. And imagine a world without yourself. And this kind of was so beautiful to me because um, I've, I've realized that um, if we do not cast vision for ourselves, we take on other people's vision. So I want to tell you guys, write down the vision. Habakkuk says, write down the vision so that everybody that can see it can run with it. So in this season, it's very important that we write down what God is saying to you. And it is so important to, first of all, go and sit with God. Sit with God without talking to him. Just allow him to talk to you. So many times in worship, like we, um, we often have this chat that like, we are very, um, we are very selfish worshipers uh, because we love singing, but we don't love it when we leave silent spaces for God to sing back. That's a very powerful, um, it's a very dangerous place to be at as well. But um, most of the time we love praying and we love like telling God what we need. But how often can we just sit and receive from him? And those people who are willing to just sit and receive are those people that God loves using. And... Um, when Bethel was in South Africa, um, they had um, 
one of their worship leaders had a dream the evening and God showed her a lot of things that that he wants to do for Africa. And um, the next day before they got on stage, she's like, Lord, how do I say this? How do I say this to the people? And he stopped her and he said, no, my child, I didn't show you these things so that you can tell them. I showed it to you because I love you and I want to just have like bounce off of you, chat with you. And um, to me, that's such a beautiful, beautiful sphere. And it's not, a, it's not an easy sphere to get at because we live in this rut of a life where we have to do this and then we need to get to this and we need to get to this. And um, we actually live such dangerous lives because it's so fast. And even in lockdown, we're saying, oh, we're slowing down, but we're still living the same past. Um, we're, we're still living the, the, the same, the same like space and yes, and speed. Um, so what I want to encourage you guys with is actually this week, just sitting, sitting and listening. Um, the first thing we need to surrender is our will and our word, um, when it comes to God and, um, yeah, so I feel like. This week is a week of us just listening to dad and um, getting to know what he sees for us. Um, it's easy to know what we want for us, but um, purpose is not about us. And eventually, the, um, Pastor Pinky said last night here and it hit me that at the end of the day, we are going to stand before the white throne of God and every single thing that was not initiated by God Mm. Every single thing that was not initiated by God will burn away before his throne. And I'm thinking to myself, like today has been such an emotional inner day, such a beautiful day. We're thinking how many of the things that I'm doing is not initiated by God. And um, so I want to urge you guys to like every single moment, like in your head, Think If you can think, Lord, I'm doing this for your glory and you are cleaning the toilet and every every time you actually do that, it is holy, 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 Jesus, holy, you are worthy, then that has purpose. But if you cannot say, Lord, I'm doing this for your glory and you're leaving a place worse than you found it, it's going to burn away before his throne. And it would be very horrible for us to stand before the throne of God, before a loving Father who has given everything, and stand with 20 minutes of your life. It's actually shocking that statistics show that the average American prays 21 minutes a year. <laughs> That's like praying for your food included. That is, that's hectic. Yeah. So, you want to add on that? Um, I would just like, I often, well, we often also chat about this, but actually, even in purpose, are you content with living for an audience of one, or are you living for the audience of many? And it's something that I ask myself continuously throughout the day, and um, <laughs> we often laugh because um, I found actually lockdown, I really enjoyed it, because I think I'm so <laughs> used to just being with me and Jesus that if I'm without people, I'm also okay. But it's just that that place of just like is God enough for you? If you if you never had to do anything else for him, like if he said just be, would he still be enough for you? Or are you living for the applause and the approval of man? Um, it's just something to always to always ask yourself in everything that we do, am I doing this for the audience of one mm. or am I doing this for the audience of many? Um yeah. Sure. Oh, and I also read this quote around that as well. It said, if you are living for the applause of people, you will die by their rejection. Please comment, guys. Um, if you guys um, would like um, God to just speak to you, um, you can also comment that. Um, if you feel like you need a word, um, it's okay. And you can comment that too. If you just want to say something, if you want to have a chat with us, please comment. Um, and it would be awesome to have this, um, as an open conversation with you guys. 
um, it's not about us and we would not dare to even start think that but um, we are starting these coffees because we actually want a community of people that want to have coffee with Jesus and um, so if you don't have coffee yet make yourself a coffee but also make an extra coffee for Jesus he likes his with milk and two sugars <laughs> <laughs> hello Alida, hello Alana, Redin. Hey Darren. It's awesome having you guys on. <laughs> yeah, Let's please see. drop some questions or comments, whatever you guys think around the topic of purpose. If you've got something to share, please um do that as well. Mm. And Alida, we love you too. <laughs> Thank you for that comment. So we've actually been um, asking questions about how do we know that we're actually losing sight of purpose? Because um, it's easy to know that purpose is all about God. And it really sounds beautiful when we talk about it. But making it, making it achievable for every single person is the goal. Making it known that every single person can achieve it, that's the goal. Um, and so one of the first questions that are like, I was asking Jesus, like, how do I know that I've actually lost sight of purpose? Because I don't, I don't feel that you can lose purpose. You can lose sight of the purpose because the word also says that his gift and his calling is irrevocable. And that's also a word that I feel for somebody out there. You might have felt like you've lost your calling. You've lost it. But you haven't, because God's word says that his gift and his calling is irrevocable, meaning that he will not pull it back. If you do not, if you do not enter into that, he might send somebody else. But if you, if you decide and you repent and say, okay, Jesus, I've lost sight of this, um, just pull me back. Pull me back. Then he will actually add to that, and he will use you wherever you are willing to surrender in. Um, so, <laughs> so the first thing um, that he said to me, if you feel like you are just wandering around in your daily routine, if you feel like you are asking the question, is this enough? Like, is this all that life is? Is, is there more to life? Um, and it feels mindless. It feels pointless. It feels empty. And then I want to tell you that um, it's not too late. Number one, it's not too late. Then the next thing, um, oh, and Debbie's mom has this beautiful quote. I don't know who says it, but I'm just saying that it's her original quote. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you want to tell them? Do you want to tell them what your mom will says? <laughs> she says about which one? Are you no, talking? the emptiness one. Oh, yeah, she, so it's something she always said to us growing up as one. I used to get so angry, and I understand it. But she used to say, emptiness does not come from too much hardship. It comes from too much pleasure. Yeah, drop the bomb. And um, that is so true. <laughs> um, if you feel like you are a bit empty in this season, it might be because of overindulgence too. Um, we were just having a conversation with, um, one of my brothers and God reminded me that God has called us for people. He's called us to people. He's purposed us to people. So if we are stuck on technology the whole time, we're missing it because God has not called you to your computer screen. Mm -hmm. If he, if he uses it as a transition to people, if he uses it as, as a way, a gateway, yes. But he does not call us to dead things because he is the God of the living. So if you feel like you have been, you're stuck in this world where you are just on your phone the whole day, or you're just on your computer the whole day, or even if you are escaping just through games, um, we might have lost sight of what purpose is. And God has called us, purposed us to people. And he sends us out. And he says, you know what? I need you to have a relationship with me. I don't need you to change. I need you to just love me. 
I will do the changing. And then because of that relationship, we want to have other people encounter God in exactly the same place, exactly the same way, even greater. And um, so, yeah, just wanted to drop that in your spirit. And then um, comparison, like Debbie Nana said, said Nana, full sentences. <laughs> like Debbie said, comparison is actually a thief. Um, Zane says, it is keeping your eye fixed on Jesus. We often get distracted by life and the enemy. We need to be intentional about keeping our eyes set on him to reveal our purpose or to groom us for it. Mm. Mm. Sure. So true. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> and, um, oh, we love you, Zane. Um, I think it's so important that we need to be intentional. Intentionality is very key. And um, in this season, like it is easy to forget where we are. It's easy to forget the importance of community because um, we've been so secluded from people. We've been so conditioned to just be with people over a phone that we might mistake it for... Um, for real community. Um, so I just want to like say that having a conversation with somebody over a phone might be a great solution for now, but it's not the end all. And um, I do feel that God is calling us to the streets, to those who people who can't give us yes. a reward, to those people who don't even have a thank you to give. And um, that's where real purpose lies, is with the, um, with the people that cannot necessarily give you a reward or those people that don't even know how to say thank you. Um, hello, Caitlin. It's awesome having you on. <laughs> Darren. And then the other thing that um, I also wanted to say around when you know you've lost purpose is um, if you have become very critical of people. Because, mm -hmm. um, and I actually said to him the other day, I've noticed like these two go hand in hand, being critical of people. But you'll notice the people that criticize are the complacent ones. So complacency and criticism almost go hand in hand together. And I'm just going to throw it out there, but I have been completely shocked around how much criticism there is especially like within churches and I know it's within every area like of life you will always mm -hmm. get criticism but it's just yeah some people become so fixated on it and it's just it's such a thief and it's just a distraction from focus so when I start becoming critical of people I realize I've become complacent and I am missing the mark hectically so I noticed that within myself if I and being critical of people or um, have something to say about how someone's doing something, it's, it's because I am missing what the real focus should be, which is always Jesus. But yeah, so that's always a place that I gauge. If I start being critical, I'm like, whoa, something is wrong in my focus. And it's, um, it's very easy to see the things that are not being done. Um, but it's not easy to see the things that have been done for a couple of years. So if you find the perfect church, run. <laughs> run away. Because <laughs> you will, the moment we enter into that church, it will not be perfect anymore. The only perfect thing in that church is Jesus. And just on a side note, do you want to tell them the thing about, we often have this thing about change, if we, if we want to see change. Yes, <laughs> we say this in a lot of those. <laughs> so change only happens by living it. If you want to see change in a culture, you have to start living it first. Because the best teacher in life is actually act, act it out. And um, like Pope Francis said, that um, preach the gospel by all means, and if necessary, use words. And um, I think that's such a great season to be in. Um, acting out Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, 
this season is the season of the open mouth, but it's also the season of taming the open mouth. Because if we, if it's a season where God has, has anointed the voice, the enemy wants to muzzle us. He wants to muzzle us with having to wear masks all the time. Having, having to say like in church, it is, it is hectic to worship with a whole congregation that, that has lost the, the passion to worship because they're standing there and you can't even see them, nothing. There's, it's dead. But then also we can't gauge what's happening inside of their hearts. But this is a season where we need to start speaking and we need to declare. But it's very difficult when all we see is the mask that we have to wear. Because the physical manifestation that we put on sometimes leads to our spiritual manifestation. And in this season, I want to come and break that off of you right now. Every single person under the sound of my voice and watching here, you and your families, I come and bleed the blood of Jesus over you and we break that in Jesus' name. Every single shackle that has been tied to your mouth, your throat, your voice, I break that off in Jesus' name. The enemy is a liar. <laughs> and so um, he's a lure. He's a lure. So um, please leave us a comment. Um, I actually want to talk about how we can find purpose and um, just if you want to say something about how do you feel like oh, yeah. okay um yeah we also often have this conversation as well but um for me the places like where the enemy has always targeted me in or not necessarily targeted me in, but try to silence me in or that's been like a constant struggle is normally where the area of your mm. anointing lies or where your, where your purpose lies. So, um, like for me, I obviously love worshipping, <laughs> for those who don't mind. <laughs> but, <gasps> what? Um, <laughs> but for, like from a young age, and we also actually often speak about being conditioned as well, but sometimes your way of thinking conditions you to the point that it paralyzes you. And like, so for me, from a young age, I think my voice was always my biggest struggle. Like I never, I, it was taken from me. Like and so much so that even as an adult, I had to get delivered from having a mute spirit because I just I struggled to talk to people and I would never sit and do something like this ever. <laughs> Nor would I want to be on a stage in front of people singing. Um, I used to have this whole book of songs that I'd written and um, I would just never sing them for anyone because if they were down on paper, that was good enough for me. Um, but God obviously set me free from that. And so I realize now looking back that the enemy targeted my voice because that's obviously what God wants to use um, to bring glory to him and to, to bless people. And yeah, so I think just that area that you struggle in the most is most likely the area where your purpose lies in. I am um, just a personal testimony as well. Like I've always had a thing against my own voice. And um, I've always felt like, why would people want to hear me? Like, why would, why would they actually listen to me? Um, I've had a thing against um, actually seeing myself because I felt like, I've, I've, I've never been the typical man with this very deep voice and this very manly man. <laughs> um, <laughs> instead, I am very <laughs> animated. And, um, but I felt like God, like I just say, just came to say, you know what, Fana, I don't want you to be different. Because I was asking him, Lord, like, you need to tell me, why did you make me like this? Where I struggle to even love, like, watching myself. Like, I, I struggle to look at myself in the mirror. I struggle to listen to my own voice. And um, he just said to me, every single person is purposed for something else. But he has purposed me for my voice. And he's purposed me to actually convey the Father's heart. And that's why he's made me softer than other men. 
He's purposed me to actually show God the Father instead of the Godfather. So many times we think of God as the Godfather. He's standing in the corner. He's constantly like offended. He is, but that's the opposite of what he is. And um, just know that God has made you perfect. He and the word says, and I love, love that scripture. That scripture says, for he's made you like fearfully and wonderfully. And that scripture means that once he went in to start making you, there was no waiting. There was no moment of doubt inside of him. For he knew exactly what he was making inside of you. He knew exactly what he's going to get inside of you. And he knew exactly why he made you. But just like that, the enemy also knows that. Because once God speaks something, he doesn't skinner. He doesn't talk behind your back. He releases it in the atmosphere around you. And the enemy is very vigilant in looking. And he, when he sees what is on your, on, your, on your plate. He sees what's on your life. And for those people who feel like... I don't know, like, I struggle with this. Like, I feel so insecure about doing this. That's exactly where God wants to use you. And um, something, this is going to maybe sound a, a bit heavy for some people, maybe, but something that God keeps saying to me over and over again is it's not about you. It's not about you. Like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling it today. I'm feeling a bit emotional. It's not my chance to... Um, to speak to someone or to sing, I, I can't do it, I'm, I'm, I'm wrecked. Or, and God just keeps saying, but it's not about you. And so it, it comes again down to that place of absolute surrender. Like, it's not about us. So are we willing to put our flesh to the side and step out the way so that God can be glorified in the situation? And it's not easy. Like, sometimes it's damn difficult. And sometimes people will never know the cost it comes at. But it's so worth it. And every time we deny our flesh, our spirit gets stronger. And so that's something like continuously, mm. is this about me? And the answer is always no. It's never, ever about us. It's always, always about God. Another thing that I think God works is the things that bother us. Um, so <laughs> sometimes I get so upset when people do certain stuff. And then I'm like, God, why am I so upset? You need to fix me. You need to... <laughs> do something right now because I'm so upset. And then God says to me, um, I've created that inside of you so that you can actually stand up and do something yourself. For you are my hands and you are my feet. For too long, we've, we've actually been, we've trying to be the mouth where God has said, I need you to be my hands and my feet. And so um, if if you feel like something is bothering you when people are throwing away old people and um, you have such a heart for those old people, do something. Passion is only worth so much as the act that you're going to put behind it. And purpose is actually the fire that makes you stand up and actually go into and do that thing. So if you feel like you need to spend time with orphans or you, you don't like it that people throw away kids, do something about it. And the other thing we were chatting about as well is like, you hear so easily in the world that I do what makes you happy and like that purpose mm. is meant to make you happy and do whatever makes you happy. And it's such a lie because actually most of the time it should, it, it's painful. Sometimes your purpose and your calling are painful because it actually costs you something. And that's where people are like, no, I'm not going to get um, too involved because it's too messy for me and it costs me too much. But actually, your purpose can be painful. It's not necessarily just what makes you happy at all. So we also often um, say to each other, do what makes you Holy. happy. Yes. So often, like, because let me, let me tell you, this is a demonic thought. Do what makes you happy is a demonic thought. And I want to just uproot that right now. The word of God does not say, do what makes you happy. It says, do what makes you holy. Yes. Do what makes you holy. Our number one purpose in life is to actually become better lovers for Jesus. And if we do what makes us happy, if I have to preach what's on my heart, you would all be off the road. Like... <laughs> 
some people would go to hell, like because of me then. But we don't preach what's on our heart. We don't preach what's in our, our like on, in, our, in on our emotions. We preach what our spirit knows is the truth. I'm just going to say this again. Your truth is not the truth. What is happening to you right now might be the truth of what you're in. But that doesn't make it the truth. The truth is Jesus and his word. So I um, just wanted to say that. And then, hello, Amanda and Ronaldo. Hello, hello, Carlin. Um, I just want to say hello to everybody. And um, Pablo Picasso actually had a quote, and I love this quote. And um, do you actually want to like read us the quote? It's so beautiful. Yes. So that it says, the meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give it away. And yeah. When, <laughs> tell us. Tell us. <laughs> I was just going to say, so often we hold so dearly to, to, to the things like that we have and um, to what we have inside of us. And we think it's all for ourselves. But it's actually just getting to that place of, like, we often, you know, it's actually such a blessing to be able to give to people. And to actually see the the joy that comes over them when you actually give and impart into them. So even the other day I was so, I don't get emotional very easily. Um, I do. <laughs> <you know. laughs> no, no. I get emotional. I'm like, ah, Jesus. No, I don't. <laughs> but um, we moved house recently. And so we were saying goodbye to the security <laughs> guards. And the one um, just stood and spoke to me. And he was just mm. like, I've, he was beside himself that we were leaving and I like, couldn't understand it. And he's like, you guys have got so much love and you just give so much the whole time. Sure. And I just realized like we take it so for granted. And I said to him, but do, lots of people love. And he was like, no, they don't actually. And so it's actually so beautiful. Something that we try to teach the kids as well is never pass a moment by to love someone, whether that's giving something or, actually just stopping and asking someone their name and um how are you like i get so furious when people say no you don't give to the people on the road begging or um wind down your window just look straight ahead and it infuriates me because actually those people just want to be acknowledged and have someone say how are you what's your name and just be interested in them not just be the person that drives past every time yeah we actually need to give more than money I think most of those people stand there because they want something, but they don't know what they're wanting. And maybe, maybe it's because you have that thing, but we're not willing to share it. And what if your life is the only love story someone will ever get to see? Like we, we don't know that, but what if you are the only like symbol of love that person will ever mm. see? In yeah. I actually read this book. Um, it's such a beautiful book. And the book's name is um, Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. And it's about this guy who grew up as a Muslim and he was seeking Allah, he was seeking Allah. And the more he tried to seek Allah, the more he found Jesus. But one of the things that, that he said in his book was that um, when he was a little boy, he was sitting in class and the, everybody was talking about Jesus to everybody else that knew Jesus but they were not talking to him. And the only thought that went through his head is, are you okay with me going to hell? Mm -hmm. And that part shook me so much because I was thinking like, am I okay with my comfort enough to walk past that person that Jesus just said in the shop? Um, you need to actually stop and say, hey, I just want to tell you Jesus loves you. But am I willing Am I willing for that person to go to hell because I was not willing to get over my comfort? And that, that's just to tie in with what she says. Purpose is often very much out of our comfort zone. Purpose is the point to which God moves you outside of you so that it cannot be about you. Yes. So that the only one that can carry you with the only strength can be Jesus. So that once you leave there and once you know that you've left there giving something that you do not have, that person can only glorify God. 
Because us sitting here doing this, this is just Jesus. Because I hate being on TV. I hate being on a platform where I can see myself. But God loves it for some other horrible reason. It's because the only thing that can carry him through is Jesus. And it's the only strength that we have is Jesus. Mm-hmm. So I want to tell you that, oh, the presence of God is so strong here. And I, I, I'm like, if you feel it, just comment. Because you can tap into this presence by just saying, Jesus, I want that. Jesus, I want that. Mm-hmm. The same presence that is on somebody else can be in your room right now. Because it's not about us. It's about an intimate God who sits at the point of your bed, knowing your every desire, knowing how much hairs you have on your head, knowing every thought that's inside of you, knowing every single desire you have, wanting to be so close to you. And this this story is so beautiful. Like There are these two parables in the Bible, and the, the one is the parable of... Um, of the lost treasure and it's about this guy that walks into this field and he's he bumps his foot on something and he looks down it's you it's a treasure and what he does is he buries it he buries it and he goes and he sells the whole land like everything he has just to buy the ground and the land that that he buried the treasure on because he knows the worth it's you something is only worth something that you're willing to pay for it if i'm willing to pay 50 rand for this jersey it is worth 50 rand but if i'm not willing to pay 50 rand for it it's not worth it to me the next parable, the right, 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 just below that, is the parable of the pearl merchant. And it's about this guy, Jesus. He walks into this into the shop with a lot of pearls, and he sees the pearl, and he's like, this is a beautiful pearl. How much do you want for it? And the shop owner says, you know what, Jesus? Everything you have. And he doesn't think, he doesn't even take a moment and he says, I'll give it because it's you. And Jesus was willing to pay the very life force of God because you are worth the very life force of God. That is the beauty of purpose. The beauty of purpose is not that we get to do something, but it's that God allows us to carry him into a place. The beauty of purpose is not that we get to be on that stage, but it's that people get to see Jesus through us on that stage. That is what purpose is. Yeah, and I also... Like, if I had to define purpose in one or two words, it would be in serving. And I often, like, say to the kids as well, and between us, like, Jesus actually served us to the point of death. And we think we've done it all, like, um, oh, I cleaned out the toilets today, and that was my bit of serving, or because that's, like, the lowest form, (laughs) apparently. Or, like, I cleaned the whole house, or I... Um, did this and this and be like yes that's serving but do we actually really know what it is to serve to the point of death the way that Jesus did for us sure so if you want to leave a comment um, please leave a comment we would love to pray over people and um, I think just to run through a couple of things that um, how we can actually find purpose first thing is surrender Hello, Denga. It's awesome having you on. First thing is surrender. And um, Debbie said this now, now, like, God can only use us in the areas where we're actually willing to surrender in. Um, 
This is like Misty Edwards always says that this is the upside down, inside out kingdom, where if you want to go higher, you have to bow down lower. Jesus didn't say, I great are the masters. No, he said, great is they who serve. Great is he who actually gives his life. For the greatest gift you can give is laying your life down for somebody else. And I think true purpose is, are you willing to lay down your purpose? Your dreams, your hopes and your desires so that one person can get to know Jesus. Um, the next thing that I was reading about was actually getting baptized. A lot of people overlook this point and we think, oh, getting baptized. I was baptized as a child. And um, that's not baptized because baptismo actually means to be completely underwater with the whole fact of uh, like actually repenting for your sins. And as a child, um, us as parents, we can dedicate our children, um, which is a beautiful act. Um, but the baptism part is actually laying yourself down. And so there's a scripture, and I um, want to read it to you guys. It is in Luke 7, verse 13. And it says, But the hearts of the Jewish religious leaders and the experts of the law had rejected the clear purpose of God by refusing to be baptized by John. And other scriptures says that in other, other translations, it says that they refused their purpose because they were not wanting to be baptized. And I truly believe that if you want to step into your purpose, if, because if purpose is not about us and it's all about Jesus, you can't, you can't step into that if you have not aligned yourself in the spirit with that. Purpose is aligning yourself. So, I would, I would urge you guys, get baptized. Get baptized, not just in water, but get that baptized in a, a faith, like in spirit. Get in a community that speaks faith. Get in a community that actually lives the lifestyle that you would like them to see. If Acts says that, that they they see the raising of the dead. If the Bible says, and Jesus said that greater things you will do. And we read in Acts, okay, so the dead were raised, the sick were healed, and the lame walk, like the lame walked, the mute spoke, and um why are we not seeing it in our churches? Why are we not seeing the word of God being manifested when Jesus did not just say it will be done in you. He said it will be done greater measure. So get into a community that can actually keep you warm. The lie of the enemy is that you can be warm on your own because you can do podcasts and you can do this at home and you can do this and you can do this. But the fact is that a digital call does not keep you warm. When coals are together, they keep each other warm. And so a fire can, can burn longer. And the word does not say, do not let your fire be quenched. It says, do not quench the fire. So it's up to you. So the next point is praying in tongues. Do you want to share something about praying in tongues? <laughs> so like praying in tongues is so important because it cleanses, cleanses our palate. And if the word of God says that, like, um, I love this, that in Romans 8 verse 26 to 31 in the Passion Translation, it says that once we speak in the spirit, we, we, we do not speak. For our mind is, is, is rootless, but the spirit speaks through us. So many times we use the scripture and we say, God turns things out for the best of those who love him. But we do not read the whole scripture. Yes, he does. But you have to read the whole context of the story. And just before that, he says, Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our purpose. And then after that, it says, then he works it out. So this whole scripture is about if we start speaking in the spirit and we start praying in tongues and however that looks like to you. If you start speaking in the spirit, God aligns us with his will inside. And then he starts using us. 
But then he starts aligning our life as well. Because the Spirit then prays through us things that we need, even don't know of yet. So um, the last thing that I was thinking is writing down the vision. Um, as Habakkuk says, that write down the vision so that everybody that can see the vision can actually run with it. If you do not know where you're going to, you will go wherever somebody else tells you to. If you do not know, if you do not know what your vision is, you will follow somebody else's vision. And it will lead to very unhappiness. It will lead to destruction. You want to say something? Um, yeah, maybe just like often I walk into places and um, obviously every place has got like a different atmosphere. And so sometimes I'm like, oh, and other times it's so peaceful and that. But I'm just thinking if your atmosphere around you, like if you're thinking, I don't know what my purpose is, my atmosphere is this and this or whatever. We often just start worshipping randomly and out of the blue and when atmospheres are heavy or when things are uncertain, just worship because worship demands that the atmosphere has to shift and not mm. because of us, but because of Jesus inside of us and Holy Spirit. So if you are not seeing that breakthrough in the atmospheres around you and what you are experiencing, then just begin to worship because the atmosphere has to change in worship and it's something so beautiful and something we don't like just take for granted it's such a a special thing that happens in the spirit when we worship so yeah that's just what I want and say. also um what i want to add with that is it's so beautiful that the word says that he lives in our praise he abides in our praise and if you think of heaven like what makes heaven 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 is heaven because the presence of god is there without the presence of god without god heaven would not be heaven and what happens in heaven, now that we know the presence of God actually makes it heaven. Um, have you noticed that like Jesus, um, when he came back and after he was crucified, nobody actually asked him, so Jesus, um, where were you? Were you in hell? Were you in heaven? What did you do there? None of his disciples asked him that. Why? And I think um, the Hebrew mindset actually thinks of it totally differently than we do. Um, and I think they, they understand something that, that is so, so, so beautiful. Because every single time Jesus talked about, about purpose and about healing, he says, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he says, go and heal. Let the dead be raised. Let the lame walk. Let, let those who don't, like... Don't have healing, have it, because the kingdom of God is at hand. Because Jesus sent them with his presence, with his Holy Spirit. And that is something we have, which means that wherever Holy Spirit is, heaven must manifest. Because the presence of God is Holy Spirit. He's not just a spirit. He is the person of the spirit. He is a full person. And um, the... The, the point that I want to get at is that when we get to the point of purpose, it's about Jesus sending us into the world. The Hebrew mindset in, 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 in the disciples were that they, I think they knew that it was not about going to heaven. It was not about evacuating. It was about occupying. And that means that it's not about just, just going to heaven. I believe that heaven is a full, real place and it's a glorious place. But I do not believe that heaven is just up there. I believe that heaven is where the presence of God manifests. And so when we come, maybe it's not about... Are you guys still there? Maybe it's not about us so much doing stuff, but maybe it's about being heaven to those who have hell right now. Maybe it's about being heaven to those people who are having hell right now. So if your atmosphere is not changing, your authority is to release 
heaven. Because wherever heaven is, Jesus will be. And wherever Jesus is, the presence of God manifests in his glory and things must change. Do you, Caitlin says, do you think we and things would have been different if we knew what's, what is going on in heaven or come face to face with Jesus? Oh, definitely. Do you want to talk? Um, well, I can just, I say yes, def definitely, because um, I had an experience where um, the one time I got sick and I started uh, my vocal cords swelled shut and in that moment I really thought I was on my way out of earth so um, I actually had an encounter with Jesus and just staring into his eyes and the complete peace and love and acceptance that I felt I can never explain to people and um, afterwards a lot of people would ask me about how was that experience and how was the encounter and i realized i can't actually tell them because i don't know what to say and <laughs> it bothered me because i started thinking did i really experience that and then i just realized that things of the spirit you can't put into words like in a physical realm because it's so like yes they're so close to each other like the physical and spiritual realm are literally this close to each other but we can't like wrap our thoughts and our mind around things of the spirit always and so that experience I was actually just saying to someone tonight like completely shifted the way that I view things in life and um just yeah I can't I can't even explain it but like completely changed my focus on how I viewed life and um like manifesting the presence of God like here on earth and into situations so I do believe things can be different and the other thing is we don't just have one encounter with God and that's that encounter. We actually should challenge ourselves and like to keep on having encounters with Jesus and keep seeking those encounters with Jesus because it's not just about one encounter with him. It's actually like a continuous thing that we should encounter Jesus as often as we, as we can. And I think that like God comes and he's the God of the in-betweens where um, he comes and he meets us on the way. Like, um, if you read all the scriptures, and it's really beautiful, like if you read the scriptures, God, Jesus was always on his way somewhere. But if you had to take out the destination, we would only take out like 5% of the Bible. If we had to take out the journey on his way to getting there, we would take out like 90% of, 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 of the stories of Jesus. And, and, and this, the moral is, and the, the point I'm trying to get across is that it's on our way to the things that we deem important that Jesus wants to stop us. It's on our way to church that Jesus wants to stop us for the one person who really needs us at the side of the road. Um, we were in Cape Town and, um, we were actually on our way back um, to my brother's place and we stopped and put some petrol in the car and God just had a stop for this one guy who was at the petrol station and it was such a beautiful encounter where in the middle of the petrol station he was crying, I was crying, I'm always crying when the Spirit of God fishes up but it was such a beautiful encounter and we we got the opportunity of seeing one soul come into the into the kingdom because we were willing to stop for the one and then that sunday he actually phoned us and said no can you come and pick us up him and his girlfriend want to come to church with us and we had the amazing opportunity of actually taking them to church and serving them all way and it, that to me that was worth more than the accolades given to any anything else because in that moment i felt jesus more on street than i did on any stage and um something else with that as well that we often chat about is like oh it's so easy to get worked up and i don't do drama well at all but it's so <laughs> easy to get worked up about um like the busyness of life or the stress of life or oh, I didn't do this thing on time, or and those things are important, but I often say to him, like, 
are we taking it into heaven with us? And if the answer is no, then it's not so important that it like should steal our joy or that it should make us anxious. So the only thing we take into heaven with us are the souls that get saved. And so, yeah, so the smaller things in life kind of fall alongside. And I'm not saying that you should just totally abandon them. But if they are stealing the fruits of the Spirit inside of you, then they are not worth giving attention to. Um, I just want to know, is Rinalda still here? Rinalda, hello. Um, can I share a word with you? I just want to... Um, I just feel strong that like, God is such a beautiful word for you. Um, if the rest of you, if you feel like um, you want an appointment with Jesus, um, just, just tap in right now. Just tap in right now. Um, Jesus has so much in store and um, he's willing to give it to all those who ask. Rinaldo, um, I feel like Holy Spirit says that there's this beautiful space in your room that he has designated for him. And he watches you as you sleep and as you mother and as you, you are a spouse and as you are doing your daily things. And the last season has been tough because like he has he has actually orchestrated it that things be a bit tighter like the reins on everything has been tightened and i feel like he is saying that he had to take you into a season where you were willing to give up everything so that you can come to your knees and his love for you is so, so amazing that he, is, he was willing to give the very life force of God for you. For so long, you have, you've, you've had this relationship with him, but for so long, you've wondered what, what, it's, what, is it, what is it all about? And today, God wants to tell you that he's planted dreams inside of you. He's given you entrepreneurial ideas and he's going to see them through. In this season that you do not see the, the, the step go up doesn't mean that you're still on the steps. Steps go forward, then up, then forward, then up, then forward. And right now that you're not seeing yourself going up doesn't mean that you're not on the step. And the spirit of comparison is a thief. It's a thief. And in this season, God has, God has caused a, a lockdown so that you and your family could actually find restoration. Things that you've been praying for. But also to, to actually seclude you from the things that have been pulling you away from his heart. Because you've been praying and you've been asking God to pull you closer to him. And right now is the season of gratitude. And he says, I need you to tap into that. I need you to tap in. Because whatever you display, your child is going to manifest. Whatever you are displaying in gratitude, whatever you are doing, whatever you are living out, is, is the testimony for generations. And God is saying that he's building up. He's building up for generations. He's saying that he is allowing the floodgates now to come open again. So right now, I come and speak to every single floodgate open in the name of Jesus Christ. Every single thing, every single blockage, every single thing that has been keeping you away, we command it. Get up and get out right now. And Ronaldo, just, just lift up your hands where you are right now. And Holy Spirit, I just thank you that you are touching her right now from the top of her head down to the soles of her feet. The whole family. Thank you, Jesus, that you are filling them so much. And right now I come and speak to your, to your spirit and I want to command it to come forward. And I want to bless it. As David said, you have taught me how to worship you even in my mother's womb. And spirit, when I come and bless you, 
with the knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you're here for such a time as this, that you've been purposed, that you've been called to the feet of Jesus. And every single thing that does not glorify God has no place and authority in any emotion or decision making. I want to come and bless you with the knowledge that Jesus is Lord, that he's provider. Thank you, Jesus, for instilling that inside of them. I want to come right now and I want to plead you under the blood, your house, your finances, every single hole. I call closed right now. And I feel that God is saying that it is time to start tithing. It is time to start giving. Give your way to a new season. You cannot outgive God. You can try, but you cannot outgive God. Whatever you want to see manifested, you need to be able to sow that. I want to come and speak purpose. Every single doubt, get up and get out right now. Thank you, Jesus, for just filling her with purpose. You are beautiful, Jesus, and we just seal it with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can I also share something? Mm. Um, I also, just when he was busy speaking, I had a picture. I think it's a lotus flower. I'm not 100% sure, but those flowers that actually come out of the water at night. And then during the day, they go back down. And then at night, they resurface. And to say that the darkness is not actually, like you feel there's darkness around you, but that's not actually your enemy because you are still this beautiful flower that blooms in the darkness. And yeah, so I just wanted to tell you that. And then, um, Caitlin. Caitlin, are you still there? Katie, as you does, mark a comment. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Caitlin, so, um, Yes, you go Beyonce. <laughs> so, um, Caitlin, I just want to speak over you right now. And um, I feel like this season has been such a, an overwhelming season where, um, like, I, I feel like you've had so much fear of, of, of the future and what it holds. And um, you've, you actually didn't know where you, you're going to, what the future holds. Um, it's like the enemy tried to remind you of your family and your past. And I want to tell you that when Jesus and when God, when God called Moses, he didn't look at his family because his whole family was, they, 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 they were pagan worshippers. And he called him out and said, I need you to move to Ur. And then he moved with his family. And then God had to separate him again. But the whole journey was about actually getting Moses to the point of being nothing before God. And the same goes with David. God did not see him as, as somebody who killed somebody. He did not see him as, as somebody who cheated. No, he said he saw him as a king. And, and can I tell you that God sees from the beginning to the end. And as he sees you, he does not see you as you see you. He does not see us as people see us. But he sees us as he sees us as we are becoming and the great thing about God is like with Moses, he, uh, like, like with Abraham, um, with Abraham, he actually gave Abraham the name. He, he changed his name as a sign of respect first. Abraham, like he changed it to Abraham, meaning father of many, father of nations. But he was not the father of faith as we know it by then. 
he because he went into he went with Sarah into um into Egypt and what happened was um Pharaoh asked him or or the king asked him and he said who's this and he said it's my sister which was half, half it was half a truth because it was half his his half sister but it was it was out of fear that he said it's my sister that wasn't faith but God changed his name as a sign of faith and then he started living up towards it and i want to tell you today god is calling you out and he's calling you out and he's saying caitlin i am calling you for purpose i am calling you to change this world as we know it i'm calling you irrespective of you and god has purposed you so much he's put so much on your plate that it is not your job to see it happen. It's not your job to see it to see it become. It is your job to love Jesus and he will do the rest. You do not carry the anointing. The anointing of God carries you. And it will carry you to places that you would sometimes be like, what am I doing here? How did I get here? It was never you to start with. It was the anointing of God carrying you into places. And I want to confirm that you have got such a calling. You will not be your family. We come and we break down every single bond the enemy has made. Every single lie the enemy has told you about that. In the name of Jesus Christ, we break that. And we command the glory of God over you right now. For you've been called for purpose. And you've been called to sing. 